FM 89 WONC Naperville, Chicago. You're tuned into the Yard Bird Suite every Sunday afternoon, 3 to 6 p.m. And I am honored and uh, privileged to have back in the... Actually, this is the first time in the studio with me, but back to have another interview. Chicago area jazz vocalist, Alyssa Allgood. Hello. Great to be back. I'm good. How are you? (laughs) I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. It's been a crazy day, as we just talked about (laughs) off the air. But uh, yeah, how, how have you been, essentially? Just how's the scene going for you and... Recently. Um, things have been really good. I think since the last time we talked, just getting more involved in the Chicago jazz scene and kind of getting uh, my name a little bit more recognized and um, just continuing to develop my uh, my music and just kind of what I'm trying to um, really push as an artist. So it's been a good uh, kind of year since we last talked. It's kind of that ground game in terms of just getting yourself out there because you have a smaller label backing you. Is that correct? Can you, or is it like an independent label? Small it's an independent label. Yes, it's backing me. Um, it's just kind of just what like a lot of people do in the city of just um, you know trying to make connections, which is something we talked about I know before, um, and just kind of going out and you know introducing yourself to people, um, continuing to just work on your craft so that you feel really polished in your performances when people do come to see you. Um, and it's really just about kind of getting out there, um, inter- like I said, kind of introducing yourself and just making sure people know who you are. It's very extroverted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> extroverted uh, business. Mm-hmm. And uh, recently, you were kind of riding off the high of your 2016 Chicago Jazz Fest debut. This yes, year. that was um, far beyond what I imagined it would be. It was such a wonderful experience. Um, of course, it's such an honor to be included in the festival that recognizes um, national artists and then uh, really recognizes a lot of the Chicago jazz scene as well. Um, so I had like a little minor freak out when I found out that I was selected for that, and then I like played it cool. Um, but then when we were there, I did feel pretty calm, but I did, um, you know, towards the end, was just sort of overcome with how wonderful the experience was. I'm not sure. I know that you were there. I'm not sure how many people exactly were there, but probably over 500, I would say. Oh, yeah. It was the Von Freeman? Von Freeman yeah. stage, yep. And that's, of course, an honor to be on a stage named after a great Chicago legend. Um, but I thought the festival, um, the audience was great. They were really receptive. Um, and even though there was so many people there, it just sort of felt like a club date. Like, it was very intimate, and they laughed at my jokes when they were supposed to, which is very important as an artist that people do that. Um, and, yeah, it was really great. Um, and, again, it was really such an honor to be included in that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I spoke to a lot of the people there and uh, a lot of people who already follow you and mm-hmm. a bunch of new people, too. So that was a huge, huge opportunity, I'm sure. Yeah. What was, the, what was the process actually to get into the Jazz Fest? Like, did someone approach you? Did you have to submit something? or? Um, yes, there's a committee that... Um kind of selects people and I think they have like a kind of a larger like overarching theme that they try to do each year um, and then I just kind of submitted my material and then just played the waiting game and then I got the call that um, I was good to go so yeah so it's just kind of a process I mean not exactly sure kind of how you might fit into what they're looking for um, but yeah I was very surprised and very honored yeah and this is definitely one of the premier jazz fest it's literally the Chicago jazz right, festival right. so are you looking at any other fests I know you've done like other smaller festivals in around the suburbs but uh, anything coming up yeah um not really off the top of my head uh, but something that i would like to um with the new city that i know we'll be talking about mm-hmm. today um that i'd like to um try to push um a lot of those festivals you have to like apply so far in advance so i kind of missed some for like this fall and things like that but that's definitely something on my radar to try to get together for like the spring or the summer yeah real quick if you are hearing was that, I don't know, chainsaws in the background? <laughs> <laughs> that it, it's just completely beyond our control. Alyssa here is on borrowed time, and um, there's just nothing we can do about that. So I apologize. If nothing, if you can't hear it, then I'll edit this out. But okay. <laughs> maybe it'll be a Halloween episode. Yes, maybe yeah. so. Maybe someone will pop into the room. Right. Anyway, um, so yeah, your album, Out of the Blue, which is a loving tribute to Blue Note artists of, uh, of yore. Um, specifically, you know, let's, before we even get into the compositions themselves, uh, let's talk about your band because you have very very awesome selection with p- artists you've been working for, for several years now. 
you ha- actually you want to introduce that? Sure, of course. Um, we have Dan Chase on organ, um, and Dan is endorsed by Hammond uh, Organ, which is of course the the organ uh, brand and company. Um, and I've been working with him for a long time. He's also um, the main person that helps me with the arrangements. So we do a lot of co-arranging together, and we did a lot of that for this CD. Um, then we have Tim Fitzgerald on guitar. Um, Tim, they're all my really dear friends. Um, Tim is a great guitarist, and he uh, wrote a wonderful tribute to. Um, Wes Montgomery, he did a big transcription, and that was uh, named the one of the top 50 best guitar books ever. So um, that's really exciting. Literally, wrote, we, the, literally wrote the book on Wes Montgomery. Yes, so just a huge transcription project, which is really great. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got Chris Matson on tenor saxophone. Um, and Chris plays all over the city. You can hear him in lots of different groups. Um, he's a Juilliard graduate, um, does arranging and writing, um, really phenomenal musician. And then Matt Pliskota is a drummer. Um, and Matt is wonderful. He's a really big time educator actually out in this area in Naperville. Um, he teaches at Nequa Valley High School. So he says very busy with that, um, and he's, he's really great. Um, and I think with that group, it's really been nice since we have been working together. I would really say that we are um, a band, right? So we've got all these arrangements and can really kind of understand each other and um, kind of bring each other to the next level, which has been really great. Yeah. And so how did you come to this uh, specific group of players? Because, I mean, you've been getting together for you know several years now and um i mean i'm I'm sure there wasn't like an open casting call or anything but uh, uh, did you just kind of fall into it yeah we just kind of fell into it um you know dan introduced me to a few of the other guys um and we just kind of started playing together and i think like the the vibe uh, musically and personally is really great Um, i think that's really important for when you're working together in an art form that's very personal Mm -hmm. that you really want to make sure that you you know just feel comfortable and trusting in the people that you're working with um and yeah i just really love the organ group um, because I think it adds this kind of different swing feel it's like a little dirtier and just a little bit more kind of in your face which I really like so yeah yeah. first track yeah (laughs) Uh, so uh, you know it's it's interesting how you kind of came into this then because I've talked to you know young enterprising jazz musicians who uh, you know they're, they're instrumentalists and usually they approach like band selection a little differently maybe or maybe they go to uh, jam sessions actually that's probably a better question to ask like do you, do you attend jam sessions more often or is it more specifically towards this group then um, I guess more specific to this group um, I don't go as much as I should but I definitely um, do go to jam sessions um, so yeah I yeah. do a little bit of both but yeah I just I guess it is a little bit different um, I think the vocalist uh, perspective and the instrumental yeah. perspective. Um, of course, I want my musicians to just be great musicians. Um, but for me personally, um, which we probably talked about before, and as you know, as a fellow vocalist, there can sometimes be, um, you know, some prejudice or kind of judgment towards singers. So sure. it's uh, really important for me to work with people who don't have any of that, mm-hmm. of course. Um, so that's, that is a big um, kind of important thing for me. Every morning finds me moaning Cause of all the trouble I see Life's a losing gamble to me. Cares and woes have got me moaning. So then you know what? Let's get right to it. Sure. Album Out of the Blue off of an independent label. It's called Jeru Jazz, um, and it's a, an independent, or it's a basically a label that's going to be housing um, like independent artists, mm-hmm. and it's run by uh, a wonderful bass player and also a good friend of mine, Joe Policastro. Oh. Um, he um, has had it for, I don't know exactly how long, but he's trying to kind of start building it up, and again, it's just going to be a place to kind of house these independent artists who maybe all kind of share similar um, ideas about their music. Yeah, would you describe the album for us? I mean, it's a loving tribute to Blue Note artists there, hence the title. Sure, yes. Um, Well, thank you very much. Yeah, it's um, been a long project to get together, and I'm very excited about it. And as you mentioned, it is um, a tribute album. Um, I would kind of more describe it as like a celebration of the era Mm -hmm. because I'm not doing the songs exactly how they were recorded. I'm still trying to put my what did you call it last time? The all good twist the or something twist, like yeah. that. The all good twist on these songs. <laughs> so, you know, still um, arranging the songs, um, sometimes doing them very differently. Like we took um, Monin, which is normally just a swing tune and made it a boogaloo, which is very different. Um, but that boogaloo style was very, very important during that that Blue Note era. You'll hear a lot of, you know, like think of Sidewinder and, and songs like mm-hmm. that it was a very important feel that um, kind of became popular. Um, so that, still trying to add lyrics. So it's this kind of idea of taking that music and, and really 
realizing how important it is even still today, um, but s trying to do something new or kind of fresh with it. So that's my, um, the whole theme of the album. So all the songs are from like the 50s and 60s. Um, and it was kind of hard to choose exactly which songs since the there's so many songs to choose from, but I tried to um, do my best of covering some of the, like the really important artists yeah. um, and still things that I could sing and all the kind of other parts of the equation. Yeah, and I think what really makes a true, genuine uh, celebration from someone who really knows the material is the original lyrics you put on top of, I think, four out of ten of mm -hmm. these these songs. Some of them uh, you borrowed lyrics from other lyrics mm -hmm. as well, but uh, your original lyrics, it was, really, it was really interesting how you might have approached some of these. So you have, uh, you have lyrics to uh, Joe Chambers' Mirrors, mm -hmm. uh, Sam Rivers' Beatrice, Wayne Shorter's Speak No Evil, I was impressed by that. And then <laughs> watch me walk away. Or I'm sorry, uh, dig this. I should say, mm -hmm. uh, dig this by Hank Mobley, which you yep. renamed. Watch me walk away. And I have a excerpt here sure. <laughs> of of the lyrics here. Now I think it's time that you did what I've got to say. I've got to say, starting with I will no longer stand to be treated this way. I held my tongue while you use yours to start a fire. Spitting out words that hurt me was your only desire. Now that I see through shades of the real you All the colors that you wear tell me you're green with envy Tell me you're green with envy a tribute to that special someone. <laughs> yes, that's what I like to joke about. So that, um, I've had a couple of people that kind of immediately think it's like, oh, it's an abusive relationship, and that wasn't necessarily what I wrote it for, um, but more about trying to realize that you control your own happiness, nobody else. So then they're in these times where there's maybe somebody who's um, not treating you well, finally being able to learn that it doesn't really matter because you can walk away from that situation and you deserve better. And that was um, a really powerful thing for me to write. It was also so much fun to write. And I yeah. think it's a message that um, uh, fortunately for me, because I wrote them, but unfortunately, because that means we've dealt with it, that a lot of people can relate to those lyrics, right? Um, so it's really just supposed to be this powerful message of, again, realizing that um, you control your own happiness and that's all that matters. And also you wrote not only lyrics for the heads of the tune, but also a vocalist from the opening parts of Mobley Solo. Yes, um, that was a very, very long process and <laughs> an awesome process um, because I feel like I really got to understand his language. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't, I did actually transcribe it as well. So of course you learn the language that way, but when you're like, you know, intricately observing it and making all your words fit into it, um, it's, I could just sing it right here. I'm not going to sing it right here, but yeah. it's just like so great. Um, and that uh, was, I don't know, it took me a couple months to really get that together. Um, and I got the approval from the publisher um, to uh, use the vocalist. And I actually got to meet the publisher when I was in New York um, just for like a weekend trip in April. Um, so he was really concerned with making sure that all of the lyrics match exactly um, Hank Mobley's accents in the solo oh. and making sure that there weren't any like vocal runs with the lyrics. And it was like, it was really difficult once I kind of got the original idea and then really like fine um, kind of fine tuning everything. Um, but I'm really happy with the product and I, I love being able to sing Hank solo with that. I think it's great. And it's a great, um, tradition, of course, made famous by like Lambert Hendrix and Ross. Um, so it feels, um, it feels kind of cool to say that I, I did that. So I'm hoping to do a little bit more, although it took such a long time, I think I'll have to like space them out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But no, that's, that's really impressive because, uh, specifically with the lyrics you've written, um, I think you have a, I think you've got a knack for it, but I think you also you. Uh, you also found a way that isn't, you know, corny or cheesy. I know the one we go to a lot is for mm -hmm. the, not the Anita O'Day lyrics. That's that's the ones you actually yep. use. But there's I think it's the Hendrix mm -hmm. uh, lyrics. No offense to Hendrix, but uh, I think uh, it's a little on the cheesy side. And also um, finding, as you said, vocal runs. It can be it can be really tempting to force lyrics onto something when right. you get really frustrated. So right, right. I, for. Uh, saying it was a long process, I absolutely yeah. know what you're talking about. <laughs> I walked with arms wide open And then you started spinning me around I followed you, thinking that you'd be true But slowly you turned my world upside down I was the fool, you could rule Thinking love was found Blink once You'll miss it Lost in the moment Think twice, notice it This wish is worth waiting for
have another song, Noticing the Moment, or in this case, John Coltrane's mm-hmm. Moments Notice, with lyrics by uh, Peter Eldridge and Kim Nazarian, who are two members of the New York Voices. And um, I, uh, of course, love that song. It's such a classic mm-hmm. um, song from this era and John Coltrane composition. Um, I really like their lyrics as well because they were just talking about that similar thing I was discussing of being in the moment. Um, and I really like uh, that arrangement. Uh, Dan Chase came up with that one as a really a little bit more modern feel. Mm-hmm. So uh, I hope John Coltrane would approve. <laughs> I think you would. It's you or no one. For me, I'm sure of this each time we kiss. And now and forever, and when forever's done, you'll find that you are still the one. It's you or no one. Now this one was uh, interesting because it's the only, I believe it's the only song here that is a great American songbook standard. Yes. So I chose to include that one on this album um, to reference uh, Dexter Gordon's version of it. And so um, Dexter Gordon has a very famous uh, recording of this song and arrangement. Um, and it's a little bit more intricate. Uh, I think about this one as like a celebration versus just the kind of replica. Um, in his version, you know, he uses like a, a pedal point um, and things like that. And we decided to put ours in three. And then we also still have like some some pedals and things going on with like some different chords. So it sounds a little different. Um, and then because I'm such a nerd, I decided to uh, transcribe um, Dexter's solo and then I put it into three and that's what we're using for the trading line that you'll hear um, towards the end of the song so it's, it has very many dexter isms so i wanted to include that as sort of uh, tipping our hat to dexter i'm not afraid to get nerdy here I'll yeah Still blinded by intolerance Our world refuses to see We're connected Yes, we're connected Another one here, Speak No Evil by Wayne Shorter Your original lyrics here And it's really impressive too uh, This was your kind of plea to the world mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I um, tried to be uh, not too obvious with the lyrics, but really just kind of promote this message of love. And um, I really do believe that as humans, as people, we're all very connected, um, regardless of um, race or sexuality, um, economic background, anything like that. That just the fact that we are all people um, makes us the same. And I think that so often, you know, you turn on anything, especially now in the uh, political season that we're in today, yeah. that um, there is so much hate still in the world. And so this hate that's about these sort of trivial things. Um, and so I just try to play my small part in this idea of, of spreading love and, and spreading awareness for differences. Um, so I don't know how many people that will change, but I do hope that it, it does something. Um, and I will say that I have had a couple interviews and several people did ask me if I wrote these lyrics for a specific candidate who's running. And I said, no, I didn't. But um, I, if I just, you, 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 I've heard you perform this song mm-hmm. long before uh, the candidates for yes. 2016 were even announced. <laughs> so I can, we can, I can verify yeah. personally right here. <laughs> right. That it's not political. It's yeah. just the spirit of right. humanity. Right? But I actually thought that was kind of funny. But no, it's really <laughs> just this message of... Um, you know, of, of love. And I think that's a message um, that will never get old. Whether or not you think it'll change or not. I, it, at the very, very least, it'll change at least how I think vocalists uh, will approach this kind of music because these are not the kind of tunes that you would expect a vocalist to uh, perform. So to set that preside- precedent, set that precedent for uh, other vocalists and to be able to provide you've essentially done the work for them to be able to build off of mm-hmm. to be able to uh, perform speak no evil now uh, rather uh, with lyrics and uh, put more emotion into yeah. it so i think i think that's really cool thank you speak love and speak no evil speak love and speak no evil speak love Define life in the moment of 
of each moment. Um, going to another song here, Beatrice by Sam Rivers, composed by Sam Rivers. Mm -hmm. uh, you wrote the lyrics to here. What was the story behind that? Yeah, so I, I kind of use um, the title of songs as sort of a jumping off point, at least for right now. And um, the first part of that name, B, uh, I kind of use that to reflect on this idea of learning to be um, comfortable and happy where you are in life's journey. Um, I think it's really easy, um, especially thinking of things as a musician to like always be thinking about the next thing or um you know what could i've done better or what why didn't this happen for me or when when will this happen and just kind of realizing that it's all about learning to again kind of be in the moment and letting those experiences happen to you um rather than always um kind of desperately searching for that next thing you know all these lyrics you've written here and even the song choices themselves they're they're pretty empowering thank you very much and this is your debut album. Mm -hmm. You had an EP release I did. earlier, but mm -hmm. this is your debut album. Yes. So I'm very excited. Um, and I do think it was smart to do the EP to at least like get something out. I don't think I was quite ready to like produce the full-length CD. Um, so this product or this project has been um, you know, a long time of thinking about the the arrangements and the tunes and the lyrics and the artwork and the list goes on and on and on. So it's very, feels good to have it released. Can you see where you should be? Or are you blind from the questions in your mind? There's a place that I know where the sycamores grow and daffodils have their fun you also performed peace by horace silver which yes. i think is i think is good uh, who, who did those lyrics actually horace silver did actually oh, okay. so upon uh the research that i did uh, a lot of research for the project um i discovered that horace silver wrote actually a lot of lyrics for his songs um and i really like this set of lyrics um they're pretty simple um but they talk about you know kind of thinking about that one specific place or that time that you feel really at peace and also um a less simple message of realizing that um peace has to come from within so I kind of realized, I didn't mean to do this, but a lot of these lyrics that I either wrote or chose for the album kind of reflect this message of um, just kind of like the human experience. <laughs> If by Joe Henderson and it's very interesting because I listened to the original version and it's not as clear cut as the way you perform it here so I think mm -hmm. it's uh, another interesting aspect is even though uh, you, you go deeper than most vocalists I think do it's also a cool way for people to get introduced into these into this music yeah absolutely thank you and that one um, is sort of a combination um, so it's a Joe Hender Henderson composition and he recorded it actually on a different label um, but he also recorded it with um, organist Larry Young on his very famous unity album and so that uh, our arrangement of that and some of like, like the voicings you'll hear in the organ kind of reference um, Larry Young's version as well <laughs> in oh so many ways and it plays all over again until you're right back here with me only a memory or Siora with lyrics by was it Milton Suggs? Milton Suggs mm -hmm. and I never met Milton um, he's another vocalist um, who used to live in Chicago and he lives in New York as well um, but again um, I love Siora I think that's a beautiful composition um, and I sort of had my heart set on recording it and then it kind of gets to the point I'm like, well, I don't know if I can write lyrics. And then I happened to, to find his lyrics. I thought they were really nice. So glad I was able to include that one. If you dare to dream in different hues, you'll find a world with avenues that lead you 
to see anew. And your set closer here, or your last song here, <laughs> uh, entitled Mirrors yeah. by Joe Chambers. Yeah, so I heard that actually on a Bobby Hutcherson album, and um, I think it's a beautiful composition, um, traditionally done as a ballad. Um, we decided to put it in seven, so it's a little different, yeah. a little more modern. Um, and again, my lyrics kind of uh, relate to the message I was talking about earlier. Um, this message is all about... Um, kind of realizing that life is a journey and allowing yourself to be vulnerable to new experiences and kind of um, seeing things differently. And I think um, when you learn to do that, you'll be exposed to so many more things about yourself and about, um, you know, just life in general. And I think for me, particularly as a musician, um, it can be, I think, very easy to be judgmental of yourself and be very critical. And when you kind of learn to, like, let go of that and just focus on... Um, you know, developing your art for yourself and for your other musicians and for your audience, um, you'll really kind of learn um, that you have the power to do that and that it's a much better kind of end product and end result versus being so hypercritical. So those are those kind of lyrics, um, way more poetic than what I just said, but that's kind of the message of that. And again, just trying to um, tie this whole idea of just like the human uh, experience. <laughs> Well, we're approaching the end here. Any uh, social media you want to plug? Um, sure, of course. I mean, I always post all my performances on my website, which is just alyssaallgood.com, and I do have some a few big ones coming up this uh, fall and this winter, um, so I hope people will come uh, check us out. Um, the album will be out on iTunes and Amazon and CD Baby, anywhere. It's okay if you use Spotify. I'll, I'll get at least... Um, a quarter of a penny if you if you stream it so um yeah anything i'm on facebook instagram twitter the whole thing you just look me up and um always looking to um make new connections and new fans so i've i think i've wound up asking every <laughs> artist this question but what are your thoughts on how about just music streaming in general free music streaming well, I will say that I use Spotify, but I pay for a subscription, mm -hmm. which is, I guess, is kind of a rare thing. Um, people don't really pay for that. Um, I don't know. It's good. It's not good in the sense that the artists don't make any money, but it is good because people can look you up. So there's kind of like that, which everyone always jokes, like you get a good exposure. Well, you could die from exposure. And everyone <laughs> always makes that joke. Um, but I think there's some there's some kind of value to it depending on who you are and where you are in your career. Um, it's certainly, of course, and obviously I was not around making CDs at the time when that was like the sole thing that people bought. So I can't really talk about the difference like economically or um, kind of personally. But of course, it is a shame that people don't make money. Um, I think. The other thing too is that like when you release an album, you can also choose if you're gonna put it up on those sites. So that's something that if people are upset about, oh, I didn't make any money. It's like, you know, you get to choose like, are you gonna submit your CD on there or not? And I, d I did for both of mine. Um, I think it's at least, you know, important, another way that like a younger generation, even younger than us can um, mm -hmm. can find us, you know, and that's like what people are doing. Yeah, I think that's uh, very similar to what other artists have said. Mm -hmm. they, they, it's. It's a it's a line between well we don't have an we don't have a huge a label backing us so right. we want that again the buzzword is exposure right of course we'll see and you have two release parties coming up here uh, one of those sure well my first one's coming up this week it's on Tuesday October 11th at the Jazz Showcase we have sets at eight and ten o'clock um, and then I'll be making my debut at the Green Mill on Monday, November 7th. And that's also going to be another uh, CD release party. Uh, we start at 9 o'clock and we have a couple sets going all the way till 1 a.m. So it's a, a long night. Um, super, super excited about that. And then um, a little bit later, um, the first weekend of December, I'll be um, debuting at a brand new jazz club that's opening up called Winters. And that club's going to be open um, officially in November. I'm not sure the exact date, um, but I'm excited to have a weekend slot there. And I'll be um, at the like the headlining spot at night so we started i think 9 or 9 30 so did you mention a new jazz club yes oh okay. i did i don't i've never heard of <laughs> ever heard of that opening up before or yes. i guess I, i've never personally heard of it but that that's cool yeah so it's gonna be um i forget the exact 
location but it's like the river north area Mm -hmm. um and it's called winter's jazz club and the whole um kind of concept is just going to be a home for straight ahead jazz um they'll have singers instrumentalists featured um and it's going to be seven nights a week of music so they're really kind of going out strong and i hope it's successful um and so yeah so i'll be there december i think that's the second and the third like that first weekend of december i'll make sure to come out yeah well thank you chicago area vocalist Alyssa Olga. Thank you so much. Voice of